Hey everyone, my name is Ian. I work at the Fort Worth Public Library and today we're going to be doing a negative space art project. I can't wait for you to see it and I can't wait for you to do it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, let's talk about what positive and negative space is. Here on this piece of paper, I have drawn a star. You can clearly see that star drawn out here, and that would be the positive. Now, if I take the star and remove it by cutting it out, that becomes the negative space. Now, you still see the star. It's still a star shape, but technically, it's the negative image of our positive star. Another way to look at that is if I have this image here, you can see that in this image, there is a vase. Well, maybe that's what you saw first, or maybe you saw the two faces on either side of the vase. Can you see the vase, which is the white part here, versus the negative space, which is the black space, or the two faces? This is almost an optical illusion when you're looking at it because you can really see it in both directions. You can see the vase, and you can see the two faces. It's fun to play with negative space. Now that we've learned what negative space is, let's go ahead and create our own negative space art project. What you're gonna need is two pieces of paper, one larger piece of paper and then a smaller piece of paper. And you'll kind of see why you need that space around the outside of this uh, other piece of paper as we go along on today's project. You're also gonna need a pencil, some glue, either a glue stick or liquid glue is fine, and then a pair of scissors. The first step to create your negative space artwork is to take your smaller piece of paper. I'm using a square, but you can do a triangle, a circle, a rectangle, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to draw some simple shapes on the four sides of the square. So uh, I think on this side, I might draw kind of a triangle shape. Now remember, you can use a ruler. I'm just gonna do it freehand here and hope that it comes out, but I think we'll do just fine. So I'm gonna do a triangle on this side. I think on this side, I'm gonna create a circle, or a, a part of a circle at least. On this side, I think I'm going to kind of just meander and create my own little shape. Okay, I've drawn my four different shapes that I'm gonna use. The next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pair of scissors and I'm just gonna cut along the lines that I just drew. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut these four pieces out. Okay, I've cut all of my pieces out, but remember you wanna save all the pieces as you're cutting them out, don't throw them away. And what I'm gonna do, I have a lot of pencil lines and what you could do is you could use your eraser to get rid of those pencil lines, but I'm gonna do something even more simple. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna flip it over so that way those pencil lines go onto the back. Now I will have to do a little rearranging of my pieces, so I'm gonna flip them over so that way they fit right back into where they were. Now that I've gotten everything arranged the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull these pieces out off to the sides so that way I know exactly where they go and in which direction they need to go for the moment. I'm gonna take my glue stick and I'm just gonna glue my remainder piece directly into the center. And I have my shapes on all the different sides to help match it up again. So when I glue this down, I know exactly which shape needs to go on what side of my excess. So I'm gonna glue this part right in the center with enough room on all sides. There we go, just like that. And now what I can do is I can take the pieces that are fit in and I'm gonna flip them over so that way they open up outwards. So that one's gonna go there. Looks like I will have to use my eraser a little bit, but that's okay. So now I've matched my 
negative space up with the positive space again and I can glue these down. So there are a few spots on my shapes where I can see the leftover pencil marks and I'm just going to go in with my eraser and get rid of those. Alright, we finished. It looks really great and don't forget that you can do all sorts of different shapes. We have our negative space and then our positive space that we cut out and it really kind of plays with the mind and your brain creates all the shapes even though they're not really there. They've been flipped over and the mirror image is out on the outside. So you can really play around with this idea and use different shapes, use different colors, use all sorts of different techniques to create something really cool and we want to see what you create so don't forget to post it on the Fort Worth Public Library's Facebook page. You can do a lot with negative space in artwork. Now let's talk to an artist and see what she can tell us about negative space in artwork. Thanks Ian, I'm so excited to be here today sharing my favorite thing in the entire world, which is art. I love being creative and I love helping others do it. And Ian asked me to talk about negative space. Well, negative space is one of the most interesting things in art but it's often forgotten because as artists, we like to think about the positive space or the subject matter. So in art, there are two zones. There is the subject, the story of our painting, where our eye is drawn and it tells us what a picture is about. But also inside of our picture is a whole lot of other stuff going on. And that can be the negative space. In this center picture here, if you look, what's our positive space? That's our girl. She's in the center. She's telling us the story. She's being beautiful. She's being fashionable. But that romantic feeling, that beautiful dreamy quality is actually also helped by the interesting space that is around her and the way that we use that. Even down here in the bow, which is super delicate and very textural all these little inward and outward spaces around her really helps tell that whole story so it's not just the girl that tells the story it's everything that happens around it and sometimes negative space kind of has two zones of negative space like mr octopus has a lot going on as the subject all his interesting tentacles and colors there's a lot of contrast that's how light or dark everything is to help draw the eye. But I have two zones of negative space. I have all the interesting white paper that's happening outside of him. And even some of his tentacle exits the picture frame to let you know that there's more that exists outside here. But inside the circle is also negative space that can happen. And even within that, see these little fish here? The space around them can be negative space. So it's a very simple idea that can get really complicated and interesting. In my truck painting, obviously the old car is our positive space, is our subject matter. It's got rust, it's got windows, it's got shapes and objects that we recognize. But within this truck are these interesting zones that aren't really the main subject matter, but are full of other interesting things. And within them, and I think for me the most interesting is coming off of the foliage into the leaves, all the winding little spaces that exist between those. So as you tell stories, you can think about what's happening in the subject, but also think about what's going on around the subject and the way that that helps tell your story too. Something important to think of and that you should definitely experience is when you play how light something is and how dark something is against each other and maybe even coming in like I did here, painting the negative space to help tell the story. Think a little bit about how large your subject matter is on your paper if your subject matter is really small and in the corner, then that's a lot of negative space. 
And that might make our subject feel lonely or isolated. Zoom in and leave very little negative space. That might make our subject feel like they're very close to you and engaged with you. All of your surface, every part inside your surface is part of your art project. So when you're being creative, think as much about everything that's happening around as what's going on inside your main story. And all your pictures, all your art will become more complete and really start to connect with people. And you can tell all kinds of stories about how you feel and the way that you see the world by letting those two things play against each other. So be positive and be negative. And I really want to thank Ian for having me today. Back to you, Ian. As you can see, you can do a lot with negative space in artwork. Now let's do an activity outside with negative space and water. For this experiment, the first thing that you'll need is a wall. Usually a brick wall works best. However, if you don't have a brick wall, any type of vertical surface will work. Second, you'll need a garden hose with a spray attachment. To complete the experiment, stand up against the wall, strike a pose, and then have somebody spray you with water. Once they've finished spraying you with water, step away from the wall and your shadow or negative space will remain. Remember, you don't want to use a lot of water, just a nice gentle spray will get the job done. Otherwise, the water running down the wall will erase your shadow. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And don't forget, if you want to learn more about artwork, you can always do that through our website, fortworklibrary.org, where you can check out eBooks or even use the other resources to learn more. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again soon.